Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on Echo Flips and give you guys a some, I guess some tricks or whatever that the class uses to its advantage. Um, it's not a very complicated class, honestly, but this could help, you know, lower levels or those who don't know much about the class, just kind of ignorant to it and maybe want a class swap to maybe become an Echo. And plus, you know, the video's in English and Dofus needs more English videos, so that's why I created this video. And, um, let me see, so I'll just begin with saying I'm about uh, 199 Eka, and I'm Omni, but I'm mostly Strength, and here's my set. It's pretty shitty, I'm not gonna lie, I'm by no means rich or have, like, a good set at all, but I can still show you, like, some pretty decent damage. So I got Ogaville's Helmet, Kushti Cloak, Brucey Belt, Shabby Shoes, Battle Flag Amulet, Tail Ring, Notwithstand Ring, um, Peccary, this, just the shield, then I got trophies, uh, mainly strength and power. Um, let's see. So, I got about, let's see, 600 strength, 250 intel, 330 chance, and like 360 agility. But, I have... 440 power, so that's about 1,050 um, strength and um, like 800 chance, 800 agility, and like 700 intelligence. So it's not that bad. I mean, with a with a fully uh, like an amazing 200 set, 200 omni set, I'm pretty sure you can get like near a thousand of each stat, which is pretty pretty amazing, and you can be 11 six, but as an Echo, since you have so much mobility and spells that grant you MP, you don't necessarily need to be 11-6. You could be 12-5, you could be 11-5. I mean, 4 MP is like pushing it, that, that's pretty bad, but I mean, I think you're manageable with 5. Um, so, let's see. What is this class all about? It's if I could summarize it into these things, it would be damage, buffs, mobility, and luck or trade-offs. So, let's see. I'll show you guys some damage right here, first off. So, for anyone who's never played Aga Flip, Clover is an incredibly important skill, or incredibly important spell. So basically when you cast it for two turns, you're going to get 200% critical bonus. That means you're going to crit with every single spell you cast. So, then Wheel of Fortune is a huge buff that gives you 350 power for three turns. After using those two, which is basically like the bread and butter of, like, Echo Flip, you always begin with pretty much using those two. You have a spell called Fate of Echo Flip. It'll attract four cells, and then it'll push back four cells. If the enemy suffers uh, pushback damage, they're gonna get minus four MP for I think it's two turns, or maybe one turn. Um. And then let's see, so for more damage, you usually, with 11 AP, you can do two Fate of Echo Flips, and then you can go into a Feline Spirit. Feline Spirit's probably the most cost-effective, like, AP to damage spell I've ever seen, <laughs> so it, it's pretty sweet. So when it crits, it's 45 Earth damage base for 3 AP. So I'm hitting, yeah, 781. That's pretty close to my Fate of Echo Flip. Um, actually, no, it is... It is my fader back here, it's just because I'm getting the pushback damage here. But, um, let me see. So those are all the earth spells. You also got, well, you, you also got lapping up, which will do damage from a huge range. Granted on how much range you got, but you know, it's modifiable, which is nice. Heads or tails also has a long range. So lapping up is 4 AP. It'll do damage, but it'll also subtract the enemy's MP. But, on the following turn, it'll give them back 1 MP, but it has a chance to subtract up to 3 MP. So, at max, you could um, reduce someone's MP for 3 that turn, which is pretty good, but then they'll gain an MP the next turn. So this class is a lot about trade-offs, like I mentioned earlier. So that's one of the trade-offs, like, like, yeah, you can subtract their MP, but then the next turn, they'll gain an MP. 
Um, let's see what else. We got heads or tails. So, heads or tails can do some pretty decent damage and from a from a far distance too. Let's see, we're talking like with a better stack, it'd be hitting like 600, potentially 700 maybe with it. But it will increase their damage by 10% if you caught if you do it twice. Yeah, it says increases the damage inflicted by the target for one turn if it is an enemy. Um, and then we got, let's see, so those are all the Earth spells. Let's go over the... Let's go over... I guess we can do Agility next. Okay. So we got Bravado, but you also have its variant, which is... Let's see, you got Reflex. I'll talk about Reflex later, though, when I get into Erosion, because that's pretty important, too. So Bravado will do really good damage like 51 to 55 and it'll give you 100 pushback damage um so then for this turn i have 100 pushback damage so when i do a spell that does pushback i'm gonna hit a lot more so now yeah i'm hitting like all, almost well over a thousand with that um another agility spell is claw of Kingo, single, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's pretty good um, pushback damage as well. Because you could just do bravado, and then you could do two of these. And it's it's not bad, not bad damage at all. Um, those are the two agility spells that I got right here. And then let's see, what do we got for um, water damage? So you have bluff. The thing about bluff is a regular hit so no critical will be doing air damage and a crit will be doing water damage so once you have clover up and you probably want to power you know give yourself some power and then now you can do water damage and it only costs 3 AP but it's only 1 to 4 range the variant has a lot more range but um the uh the damage is split i think the regular version does water and then the crit does uh, does air so you just gotta you gotta be very like wary about whether you have clover up or not because it's it only lasts two turns you can turn it off whenever you want by recasting it and then you'll have minus 200 critical so you will never crit with with it off um but then you can put it back on but you can only do that twice per turn so so yeah there's there's a drawback with that um let's see so what's another water spell so when um, when Misadventure does not crit, it does water damage. But it has the chance, you always have the, uh, the chance to crit unless you have, you know, the 200, minus 200% 200 critical from Clover. So you gotta be kinda careful with that. Um, and then let's see. So if I put that back on, then let me see, you got Felinchian or Felinchian. Um, that'll, you can't, you can only cast it three and above range, so if you're too close to someone you can't cast it. It'll push them back two cells and it'll also light heal, which is nice. Um, and then you have all or nothing, so there's another drawback. Or this is a trade-off. When you hit them, you will do damage and you'll also heal yourself and, and all your allies around you. It has a huge range. Um, but then the next turn, you'll get hit and they'll get healed. So depending on your intelligence, um, you can do a lot of damage, or you can, like, accidentally heal, and just so your chance to intelligence ratio there matters a lot. Um, and then let's see. And then fire spells. I don't have many up, and honestly, most people don't use them. I guess if you are into Ekka, they could be pretty good. Um, but there's a spell called Yowling, and then Topkaj. And Yowling is like way less range, but it does more damage. You can also heal your allies with it. But Topkaj is uh, way more range, but it just it hits less, you know. But it only costs three AP, which is nice. It's like this uh, pretty cool looking spell. Um, and then let's see. I think I think that's really the only fire. Oh, you have rough tongue if you get the uh, the variant of lapping up. 
and that's another trade-off. You subtract range on one turn, but then the next turn they gain five range. So it's not bad if you're like, if you know you can get to someone, you can subtract their range, and then run up to them quickly, and it doesn't matter if they have plus five range because they're right next to you anyways. Um, and then you have paw pads. I've never really messed with the intelligence build that much, so... So yeah, I can't really speak that much on it. Um, so you got a spell called Trickery. Trickery is really unique. Um, so basically, you... The AP cost of Trickery changes each turn, or every time you use it. So right now it's 2 AP. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, randomly on each cast. So it's not showing it right now, but it should be. Um, I guess it's kind of glitched out right now because of the recent update. But, um, so with 5 AP, it'll do earth damage. And when you crit with that, that's 70 to 74 earth damage. That's a shit ton of, <laughs> like, base damage. But it does cost 5 AP, but that's still a lot of base damage. Um, with crit for earth, for air, it'll be 4 AP, 55 to 59. With crit with water, it'll be 41 to 45, and, and fire 27 to 29. All of those are really good, um, like, it's kind of like Feline Spear, it's very, like, efficient damage. Like, the AP to damage ratio is, is very good. See, with Agility, or Air, I just, it cost me 4 AP to do 785 damage. Which is pretty damn good, and the Earth one can easily hit over, like, a thousand. Um... But every time you cast it, you don't know what the next one will be. Like, this is the Earth one, yeah, you did over... over a thousand there. So let's see. What else can I tell you about Acroplex? So I showed you... pushback, right? So let's see, so Fate of Acroplex, it'll push them back, but then if it's cast at maximum range, it's just gonna bring them back to where they were. If it's cast like one less than it'll bring them to the spot and so on and so forth um what else can we do for pushback you can do claw of kingo so if you hit them right next to them it's going to bring you two cells in front but it's also going to push them if you're use it at maximum range it's going to bring you three, four, four cells ahead and also push them back. So a good strategy for uh, Pekka's is to, if you're really far away from someone, let's say you start up over here, right? Um, and this thing is maximum three range, right? If you summon Roulette, which will give you buffs anyways, right? Because the way Roulette works is, um, Every turn it'll give you random buffs, but it'll also give the enemy random buffs. That's another trade-off. <laughs> so if you use it on roulette, you waste 2 AP, but then you move forward 4 instead of having to use MP, and now you still have 5 MP. And then you also have a spell called Catnip that'll give you MP. You can cast it 3 times, so you can give yourself... Let's say you can give yourself 3 MP for 3 AP. So I guess this is a good transition to mobility. So let's see. How did I just get dodge lock from the Oh, no <laughs> fucking 50 lock from roulette. Alright, so if um Let me see, how how much MP can you give yourself as an item? So you can give one, two, three, right? And then you can also cast a spell called smell, there's another trade off. So you cast it on your spell. It it costs 3 AP that turn, but you gain 2 MP. So you can give yourself 3 plus 2 MP, so 5 MP. So now I have 10, right? That's that's a crap ton. But then the next turn, because of smell, I'm going to lose 2 MP. But I'm going to gain 3 AP. So it's nice if you can get to the enemy by the time the, the next turn comes, because then you have a lot of AP, and but you lost a little bit of MP. The thing is, you can still do catnip every turn, so it's not that bad. You just basically give yourself 3 AP. Um, 
Galaxy. So yeah, so people like to summon things, call Kingle, call Kingle it. And then you can MP yourself. And get to the enemy and hit them. Um let's see. So let's talk about lifesteal and shield. So basically survivability. Survivability is pretty damn good just because of all the MP spells I was talking about earlier. And ooh, I shouldn't stay next to this guy. He just gave him AP. You know, funny enough, he'll actually kill you. Fucking bastards. Oh, again. Um. Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting off topic. So, so life steal is pretty good with these guys. Um, let me just kill this thing. It doesn't give them MP or AP. Accidentally killing me. So the our one. Well, we have two life steal spells, I believe, and that is misadventure and Palinchin. I don't think any others life steal. So Misadventure is like an AoE, but it works in this uh one, two, well hold on. Let me get let me get it right. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it affects eight cells overall, which is pretty pretty nice. It's a I guess it's called a ring of two cells around you. But um when it crits it does earth damage. So you have to cast it like either one behind you or to the side. You can't directly cast it on yourself or the enemy if you're right next to them. You could be two cells away from them and then do that. But you can really cast it just behind you and it's the same thing. And do that twice per turn I believe. Yeah, so twice per turn. And then if it does not crit, so if you have um if you have clover down, it's gonna be doing water damage. Which is not bad, because the, the base damage is pretty good for the AP cost, 38 to 42. And you're stealing it, so that means half of it will be, uh, you know, you you heal half of the damage. And then Falinchon, um also is lifesteal. And it has pretty good base damage as well for 4 AP when you crit 40 to 43. So, similar to Misadventure. But it is just water damage, it doesn't change in um, element at all. So that's pretty good, and, you, and then you also have a spell called a Repercussion, which will give you a huge shield uh, when you crit. Let's see, it's 23% of your health, so I have 938 shield, but it's only for that one turn. So end my turn, I have it. Like he would have hit me, and or like you know if you're playing, if you're facing an enemy or whatever, they'll hit you, but you have that shield, and then the next turn it's gone. So it only lasts one turn, which kind of sucks, but. And then you get, and you can't cast it for another three turns after that. Um, and then yeah, you do have your cat, which will help you. It'll heal you. It can also heal one of your teammates, but it can only heal you once per turn. Um, so basically, if you have your cat out and you do misadventure twice, let's say that can heal you almost. And the cat will heal. The, I, I'm not sure if the cat's healing is dependent on your intelligence or not, but generally it heals me between like. 350 and 400 um and then if you use misadventure twice depending on how much you hit you could be healing like up to a thousand a turn which is pretty damn good and then also doing a lot of damage or a decent amount of damage i can't speak on like echo flip healers intelligence ones i've never i never was one i don't really see any and i don't really like see anybody like boasting about it or anything but maybe they could be good, I, I don't know. I really don't. Um, so yeah, the, the class is really about trade-offs. Like, Roulette will give a random bonus to everyone. So it's not just you, it's everyone, right? And then Snell, they will give you MP, but it, it just reduced your AP, right? And then, well, I mean, every spell reduced AP to cost, but then the next turn, like, like yeah, you have MP, but then the next turn you lose it. But you gain the AP, so it's yeah, it's like there's a plus and a minus to everything you do, pretty much. 
Um, trickery, it's a good spell, but what if they're not in... What if they have high resistance to the to the one that it's on right now, or if the, what if it's the intelligence one, and but you're a but you're a strength echo or something, or a chance echo or something, and then you don't really you don't want to use it because it costs AP and it's in a different element, and you're not sure if it's worth it, right? Um, what else is based on um, like a trade up? Oh, okay, so clover, clover and weapon damage. I forgot to go over that. So. When you use Clover, it will give you 200% critical, but it also do minus 20% weapon damage. So if you have a weapon, you'll be doing your crit with Clover will be the same damage as a non-crit with no Clover, basically. So 614 to 964. And then you have the crit up 614 to 964, 642 to 922, so basically the same. Um, so basically when you have Clover up, you really want to be doing spell damage. If you want to go in and use your weapon, I would I advise like either not having Clover up or having the using it again if it's already up to do the minus 200% critical. Um, Actually, I don't know. Even if you do the minus 100% critical, is the damage? Yeah, just just don't have clover up, basically. If you're gonna do, um, if you're gonna use a weapon, then you have. Oh yeah, we can go over echo flip slug. So it's, it's a pretty good spell, but it's another trade off, right? So so on this turn, if I cast it, the enemy will hit me for 50% damage. Like so, fit, so their damage will be halved this turn. But then, they're gonna do 50% more damage the next turn. So it, it can save you potentially, but then that next turn you really have to be careful and you could die like pretty easily. But it's kind of good for like a um, like last ditch effort, you're about to die type of thing. Um, and I think that's I think that's pretty much it, honestly. So it's a pretty like simple class, I'd say. Um, and I'm planning on changing to either a rogue or heliotrope, just because I'm kind of kind of bored with it. But it, it is a fun class, but it's just like it's not that complex, and I'm kind of getting bored of it. But then again, I'm I'm more of like a sporadic person. I start choosing classes randomly. So so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this, and um, I hope it was able to help out maybe some newbies or people who didn't know some of this stuff. Peace out.